Um, so going back to the question of what does it mean to be undocumented, what does it mean to be unauthorized, um, generally that means there's some sort of status irregularity. Um, maybe uh, you overstayed your visa, or maybe you entered the United States without a visa, um, and so that you didn't have any status to begin with. Or maybe you're still here and your visa, you know, it's, you're still within the time limits, but for one reason or another, you violated the terms of your visa. Your visa was for you to come here and study. Um, you're working, um, you know, even though you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be in school, or you're here, you're supposed to be visiting, and, and you're working, and, and so that's a violation of the terms of your visa. Um, these violations are civil immigration violations. Um, they're not violations of any, any criminal law. They're not a violation of New York criminal law. They're not a violation of federal criminal law. Um, it's a civil immigration violation. Unauthor unauthorized work um, is a, a civil violation. Um, and, and keep in mind, again, that um, you know people who are here, a lot of families, they may be of mixed status. And so um, you know, an undocumented worker who's here, maybe with a visa but in violation of the visa, or um, who never came with a visa across the border and is working with that status, they may be in a family where you know, the children are U.S. citizens, or maybe the grandfather is a U.S. citizen, or you know, the spouse is a permanent resident. Um, it, 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 it's, um, keep going back to the same point of there's no one profile, and it, it's hard to make assumptions about these sort of things. Um, so the one thing that is true is that immigration status um, in the United States, a person's immigration status in the United States, does determine their ability to work in the United States and whether they have permission to do so. Um, so your immigration status is linked to your ability to work um, legally. Um, and this wasn't always the case. Um, I mean, it's been the case for a long time now, but it wasn't always the case. And um, I think many of you have probably uh, heard um, about uh, the 1986 Immigration Reform and Control Act, IRCA, um, which ushered in um, this connection between immigration status and, and ability to work um, and, and brought in the employer sanctions regime that we now all live under. Um, that's what brought in the I-9, which, um, um, you know, if you're a WT worker, then you filled out the I-9 form where you have to show your passport or your birth certificate and your driver's license, you, you know, you, you're proving you're eligible to work with that form and employers have an obligation to keep that form fill it out um, and have it on hand in case uh, the federal government wants to conduct an I-9 audit. Um, and so those, those are brought in, this regime was brought in with the 1986 Immigration Reform and Control Act, uh, which made it unlawful for employers to hire workers without authorization. So that's something to keep in mind here. Um, the, the, the focus is on the employers. Um, like I said before, working without authorization, it may be a violation of your immigration um, of your visa, but um, it's not a crime. Um, it is unlawful for employers to hire um, undocumented workers, um, and there are sanctions that can be imposed by the government um, against employers who do hire uh, workers without authorization. Um, there are uh, civil penalties, um, monetary penalties, and I think criminal penalties as well. Um, and at the time that this law was passed in 1986, there was a lot of support for this idea of penalizing employers for hiring unauthorized workers. Um, you know, a lot of support from civil rights groups, from unions. Um, the idea, and, and the, the other piece of the 1986 laws was that there was um, what's, what's been called an amnesty at the time, so that a lot of people who were here without status were able to apply uh, for status if they could show that they had been residents of the United States for a certain time. So there's this bargain made, um, you know, oh, we'll, we'll regularize this group of people's status, and at the same time, we're gonna impose these um, new sanctions on employers going forward if they're hiring unauthorized um, workers. Um, and, and like I said, there was a broad support for this idea at the time um, because of this idea that the United States was a job, jobs magnet and we needed to turn off the magnet um, and we needed to um, maintain labor standards and maintain the quality of U.S. jobs and the availability of U.S. jobs for U.S. workers. And that was sort of the whole thinking behind, behind this regime. Um, and so now here we are 25 years later and it, it, it's really proven to be just the opposite. Um, um, 
you know, it, many of you are much more familiar than I am. Danielle is much more familiar than I am with uh, the rampant workplace exploitation of immigrant workers, particularly low-wage immigrant workers, and um, the truly dreadful workplace conditions um, that many workers endure um, and try to fight against, but are hamstrung because of their immigration status and because of the fear of retaliation by employers that they face because of their immigration status. And so even though the laws are directed at employers, it's the employers who hold sort of all the cards in the struggle between labor and management, um, or employees and employers. Um, I, you know, why is that the case? It, it's sort of counterintuitive, um, but I, I think it really makes a lot of sense. You know, our, our, our employment law regime really depends on a couple of things. It depends on widespread coverage um, it, so that the floor can be maintained. Um, so it really depends on people being covered by those laws. Um, and, you know, by and large, by and large, employers had mixed success, you know, in trying to cut immigrant undocumented workers outside of these laws. Um, you know, courts have really um, mostly agreed with workers that um, immigration status doesn't matter when it comes to um, your wage and hour rights. Um, immigration status doesn't matter when it comes to um, anti-discrimination, um, your right to, um, to organize and bargain collectively. Um, it shouldn't matter, courts have agreed on that. But um, you know, the effectiveness of our employment law regime also depends on, um, by and large, on private enforcement and workers' willingness to come out and enforce these laws and, and say, hey, the floor is here, it's not here, um, you know, these are our rights. Um, and, and that's where I think um, you know, a lot of Im immigrant workers uh, face a challenge because of the threat of retaliation the employer, you know, their First Amendment rights, the employer could can say, oh, you know, I can call immigration, um, and, you know, I know that you're, you're not without status, or, you know, I had told you to go get that fake document um, to fill out the I-9 form. You know, they have a lot of chips against the workers, and the workers don't want to lose their jobs, they don't want to be deported, um, and be sent into this, um, like, truly Byzantine and, and horrible detention and deportation system. Um, and so there are a lot of factors weighing against um, immigrants um, feeling like they're able to step up and assert and assert their rights. Um, I think, and I don't really want to go on and on and on. Um, I think sort of that's that's the problem that we face now: employer sanctions, um, which I really I, I like to think about about it more as the federal government deputizing employers to enforce immigration law on its behalf. Um, and you know, I think that's. That experiment has shown that it, it, it doesn't really work. Um, it may be good for employers, but it's really not good for uh, the rest of us. Um, and um, you know, I think I think it is definitely time to question um, you know the efficacy of that regime and 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 to think about not only how it impacts immigrant workers, but how it impacts everybody else. Um, and so you know, if there's anything that I any point that I'm trying to make here, it's that. Um, you know, immigrants are part of the 99%. Um, their rights at work um, implicate everybody else's rights. Their ability to enforce the law um, implicates everybody else's ability to, to enforce the law and to maintain um, that floor um, and to maintain labor standards. Um, so that's it. Thanks.